viewers, welcome to Norsat Satellite Channel and Telemir TV. We begin with the following headlines. Pope Francis calls for an immediate ceasefire on all fronts. His Majesty the King stresses the need to stop the war in Gaza and Lebanon. Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzabella, violence and wars will never bring peace and security. The Papal Nuncio in Jordan blesses the sending of medical aid to support Lebanon. From the headlines to the details. His Holiness Pope Francis delivered a message in which he expressed deep concern over the ongoing events in the Middle East. He renewed his call for an immediate ceasefire on all fronts, emphasizing the need to pursue paths of diplomacy and dialogue to achieve peace. Pope Francis also expressed his closeness to all the affected populations in Palestine and Lebanon, stating that he prays for all the victims and displaced people, noting that war is a defeat and will never bring peace or security. The Holy Father urged everyone to pray for an end to all forms of violence and to begin working towards building peace, reconciliation in the region and safeguarding the dignity and rights of all. For his part, His Majesty King Abdullah II reiterated the necessity of stopping Israel's war on Gaza and Lebanon and intensifying efforts to achieve a comprehensive truce in the region. His Majesty called on the international community to coordinate an immediate response to the humanitarian disaster in Gaza. This came during his participation in the Southern European Countries Summit in Paphos, Cyprus. In a session focused on the situation in the Middle East, attended by His Royal Highness Crown Prince Hussein bin Abdullah II, the King emphasized that increasing humanitarian and medical aid and ensuring it reaches all areas of Gaza is essential to saving the lives of innocent civilians. His Majesty also warned of violations against Islamic and Christian holy sites in Jerusalem, stressing that there can be no peace or stability in the region without a just and comprehensive solution to the Palestinian issue, based on the two-state solution. His Beatitude Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzabella, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, expressed solidarity and support for the people of Gaza, condemning the violence and crimes committed over the past 12 months. He noted that these actions have left a deep wound among all parties to the conflict due to the destruction, hunger, suffering and death they have caused. His Beatitude stated, We reaffirm our belief that violence, aggression and wars will never bring peace and security. These remarks were made during a prayer hour dedicated to peace in the world, and especially in the Holy Land. Various parishes of the Latin Patriarchate in the Holy Land and Jordan also participated in holy ding prayers, divine liturgies and hours of adoration, united in prayer for peace in the Holy Land and the Middle East. The Refugee Department of Middle East Council of Churches issued a statement highlighting that leaving this humanitarian tragedy in Gaza unresolved will not bring peace to the Middle East. This statement revealed the world's indifference to injustice, especially after a year of unbearable destruction, ongoing suffering and the worsening humanitarian catastrophe that has scarred Gaza. Palestine and Lebanon to an incredible extent. The wars not only destroyed buildings but also exposed the failure of the international community to uphold the utmost basic human rights. It revealed how the world applies double standards in enforcing international humanitarian laws. The Refugee Department noted that the human toll has been unprecedented and catastrophic, particularly for the most vulnerable groups such as women, children, people with disabilities and the elderly who have borne the brunt of violence. Pope Francis has appointed 22 new cardinals, including the first cardinal of Palestinian descent, Archbishop Natalio Pshomeli, the Archbishop of Santiago, Chile. The Patriarchal Vicar for the Latins in Jerusalem, William Shomali, stated that this appointment draws the world's attention to the presence of a living church in Palestine, which continues to work and bear human and spiritual witness amidst tragic and crucial circumstances. The new Cardinal Shomali was born in Santiago, Chile, and his family originates from Beit Sahur. He has been Archbishop in Chile since 2023. He was consecrated as a bishop in 2006 and studied philosophy and theology at the major pontifical seminary in Santiago. And later, he earned a doctorate in theology. The Papal Nuncio to Jordan, Archbishop Giovanni Pietro del Tasso, blessed humanitarian aid including medicines and medical equipment, which was delivered to the Lebanese embassy in Amman through Caritas Jordan. This aid is part of the effort to support Lebanon's healthcare sector, helping the country cope with its current difficult circumstances. In this context, Archbishop Del Tasso expressed his gratitude to Jordan for its continued support for Lebanon, emphasizing that this initiative reflects the Kingdom's solidarity with the Lebanese Republic. He also expressed his appreciation for all those contributing to aid Lebanon, particularly Caritas Jordan. 
Under the patronage of His Grace Bishop Christophorus, Metropolitan of Jordan for the Greek Orthodox Church and in the presence of several priests and youths from the, across the kingdom, the official headquarters of the Orthodox Youth General Secretariat was inaugurated in a special spiritual atmosphere. During his meeting with the youth, His Grace praised their role in strengthening spiritual ties and deepening faith within the church community. He encouraged them to take on responsibility and adopt serious and meaningful stances in their daily lives. His Grace emphasized that the youth's role extends beyond spiritual life, including the development of family and the surrounding society. He also spoke about the close relationship between the youth and God, calling on them to spread the message of love and peace that Jesus Christ taught us. After the meeting, everyone proceeded to the Secretariat headquarters where Bishop Christophorus led a water blessing prayer and consecrated the place. He expressed his hope that this headquarter would become a center for spreading love and peace among all young people. The Patriarchal Administrator for Greek Catholics in Jordan, Rev. Archimandrite Paul Nuzha, presided over the Divine Liturgy at St. George Greek Catholic Church in Fahis. He was joined by the parish priest, Rev. Archimandrite Paul Haddad and Archimandrite Hikmat Haddadin. Afterwards, Archimandrite Nuzha met with the seminarians who are still studying theology at St. George Monastery in Fahis. During the spiritual gathering, he encouraged them to lead a spiritual life as they are the future of the church. At the end of the meeting, the priests and deacons shared a meal of fellowship. The Palestinian Judicial Institute, represented by its director, Judge Bilal Abu Hantash, signed a memorandum of understanding with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in the Jordan and the Holy Land, represented by Bishop Dr. Sinni Azar. This agreement aims to establish a collaborative partnership between the two sides in areas of judicial training and integrating ecclesiastical law into the Institute's various training programs. Following the signing of the agreement, which was attended by several judges from both parties, Judge Abu Hantash welcomed the visiting delegation, emphasizing the importance of this agreement in building the capacities of judicial staff by providing the training programs and curricula necessary to enhance their skills and abilities. For his part, Bishop Azar expressed his pride in signing this agreement and the Palestinian Judicial Institute's responsiveness to the Church's request to include ecclesiastical law in the Institute's training plan and programs. <laughs> Minister of Culture Mustafa Rawashte, accompanied by Algerian Minister of Culture Dr. Surya Muluji, inaugurated the activities of Amman International Book Fair. The opening ceremony was attended by several Arab ambassadors and featured the participation of 400 local Arab and international publishing houses. In his speech, the Minister of Culture stated that this 10-day fair is one of the most important cultural and creative industries in the kingdom. He added that as we open the fair, we must remember what is happening in Gaza due to the brutal Israeli aggression, highlighting Jordan's strong stance represented by His Majesty King Abdullah II, who carries the honor of the Hashemite guardianship over the Islamic and Christian holy sites in support of our brothers and sisters in Gaza. For her part, the Algerian Minister of Culture expressed her happiness for her country's participation in the Amman International Book Fair, where a distinguished group of Arab intellectuals and writers gathers to celebrate books and creativity. On the sidelines of the book fair, a discussion panel titled Jordan's Responsibility Toward the Holy Sites Based on the Hashemite Custodianship was held. The panel featured contributions from Rev. Father Nabil Haddad, Director General of the Center of Religious Coexistence and former Minister of Awqaf Dr. Hail Dawood. Father Haddad stated that discussing Jerusalem and its relationship goes beyond the connections to its stones. It extends to its significance as a focal point for believers and monotheists. He emphasized the importance of Jerusalem to Christians and its unique status for Jordan. He noted that the Christians' connections to Jerusalem represents a unified stance in support of the Hashemite custodianship. For his part, Dr. Dawood spoke about the religious significance of Jerusalem and the support needed from the nation regarding this holy city, pointing out that Jerusalem remains the core of the Arab struggle against Israeli occupation. Father Dr. Jihad Shwehat, the General Director of the Latin Patriarchate in Jordan, sponsored the inauguration of the Juljula Shrine in the town of Anjara, located in Anjloun, Governorate. The event was attended by Father Firas Nasrawin, Father Samir Mdanat, and Dr. Basim Sam'an, the Regional Director of Nusa Jordan and Palestine, and a visiting European delegation. This visit was initiated by the Hashemite Royal Court, reflecting their direct interest in the site and its restoration. The delegation toured the monastery, the orphanage school, the new Juljala Shrine, and the Shrine of Our Lady. Additionally, the parish of the Church of Our Lady of the Mountain held the Thanksgiving Mass led by Father Yusuf Francis, the church's pastor, where the faithful expressed their great joy for the shrine, which offers blessing and provides an opportunity for prayers and glorifying God. It is noteworthy 
that the monastery and shrine of Our Lady of the Mountain in Anjara have been recognized by the Vatican as one of the pilgrimage sites for Christians in the kingdom. The construction and establishment of this site were overseen by Father Francis, while engineer Firas Mqattash handled the architectural design and donated the costs. The church and shrine of Our Lady of the Mountain were established in 1932 on the ruins of an ancient church dating back to the 4th century AD. This church is also one of the five sites accredited by the Vatican to serve as a destination for Christian pilgrims in Jordan and worldwide. There are many reasons why um, I'm here today. First and foremost, because uh, Abuna Youssef invited me and my friends to participate in the opening of the new church, which is very beautiful, the Church of Golgotha, with the statue of our Lord on the cross, which was brought by my friend Ferris from Romania for today. So the first reason we came was for the, um, to be present at the opening. Um, and I think the big reason we came was to see the children. Here, the church looks after an orphanage. There are 25 children who are here for various reasons, and the priests and the nuns give them a fantastic life, and they teach them and the children are growing happy and I brought 24 friends from England who wanted to come and see Abuna Yusuf see the sanctuary and meet the children so it's very important that we come to the children and then from a religious point of view mm -hmm. Angera is where Jesus and Mary slept in the cave and we mustn't forget that it's uh, mentioned in all the biblical traditions and his holy father Pope John Paul II named Angera as one of the five places of pilgrimage in the year 2000 so this is a very important place for uh, Christians to come on pilgrimage to pay their respects and to pray and I'm happy to come here today as a friend and as a pilgrim I think. Under the patronage of the acting patriarchal vicar for the Latins in Jordan, Father Dr. Jihad Shwehat, and in the presence of Dr. Ashraf al Nimri, Secretary General of the General Secretariat of Christian Educational Institutions in Jordan, along with several priests, sisters, school directors, and various dignitaries, the top performing students in the general secondary examination from the schools of the Latin Patriarchate were honored on stage of Terra Santa College. Among the notable achievements, student Tania Ghadir secured the first place in the kingdom in the scientific stream, while student Maha Faiz Nassar ranked first in the literary stream, both hailing from the Rosary Sister Schools in Shmisani. The school administrators congratulated their high-achieving students, wishing everyone success in their future endeavors. And with that, dear viewers, we have reached the end of our broadcast. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. Pope Francis calls for an immediate ceasefire on all fronts. His Majesty the King stresses the need to stop the war in Gaza and Lebanon. Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzabella, violence and wars will never bring peace and security. The Papal Nuncio in Jordan blesses the sending of medical aid to support Lebanon. For more details, please visit our website, nursajot.org. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day and see you again next time.